We are back once again with another mini PC, this time from Blackview. If you watch my channel, recently we did do a video on one of their other mini PCs, the MP200. And I think that was a decent value mini PC, but this one is not going to be quite up to par as far as specs go with that one. But this includes the Intel Otter Lake N95. I'll put all the specs up on the screen. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte. SSD, but let's go ahead and unbox this thing. It is a tiny little PC, but we're gonna put it through its paces I got some hard drives over here with some uh, retro games emulation and whatnot We'll see what this thing is capable of doing, but man This is the little tiny guy a uh, little fella right here Intel inside what the <laughs> we got three HDMI's what the heck? power button there some airflow three USB's two Ethernet's what the heck? okay interesting interesting uh, input output layout here weird I wish I had USB C but it does not that's okay but there she is it's a little tiny thing Let's see what else is in the box a little manual we don't care about that it's just a PC we plug it in get going HDMI it comes with power supply uh, mounting bracket and some screws for said mounting bracket, I would imagine. So let's get this thing plugged in and check it out. Okay, so I've got this PC plugged in. I recorded a bunch of footage and I just wanna blast through this real quick. This is not the most capable PC in the world, but it's surprising to see some of the stuff that it can do. Now, when I first powered it on, I didn't know there were LED lights, but this thing does glow, it's kind of cool. Not really distracting to me, but to each their own. But let's just fly through the gaming test here to give you guys a good idea of what this thing's capable of. Now, I'm not going to focus on PC gaming much here uh, because it's just not that capable to perform with some newer releases, some AAA games. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of indie releases, lower demanding games that are going to run just fine. You may have to make some sacrifices with some things. You know, these cheap little Intel based mini PCs that are a couple hundred dollars or less, you know, you, you got to squeeze them to get the most out of them. And I was actually surprised with some stuff here. So uh, Nintendo consoles, obviously I'm not going to bother with 8 and 16-bit stuff. All those kind of games are going to run fine here. But things like Nintendo 64 ran great. No issues at all. GameCube was essentially the same thing. I really didn't have an issue with uh, GameCube as far as the games I test. Now, obviously, I can't test every game in the entire library every time I do a video like this, but just expect that you may find a game here and there, even you know on a system that I say I didn't have a problem with, you may find a problem, may require some you know, syst uh, you know settings being changed, stuff like that, or maybe just some games will be a lost cause. I don't know, but GameCube seemed to be fine. Same thing with the Wii, had really not too much of an issue there, playing things like Mario Kart, New Super Mario Brothers. Those games run fine on this device. And I was kind of surprised to see uh, with the Wii U, I played a Mario 3D World. And that game was running decently well. Now, not every Wii U game would run fine on a system like this, but it's going to be a little hit and miss. It's going to be a little hit and miss. Uh, going back a little bit, Sega Saturn I had no issues with at all playing a few games. So, yeah, you can expect Saturn to do decently well here. Same thing with uh, Sega Dreamcast. I didn't really run into too much of an issue there. And then moving on to PlayStation stuff. PS1, I don't even know why I bring it up. This runs on everything. Take your mom's vibe, plug it into a potato with nine volt battery, hook it up to an old Casio calculator watch, and PS1 will run, runs on everything. So yeah, it runs here. Now moving on to PS2, I was not having too much luck there. Games were running slow. You know, I'm using these plug and play builds on low settings for low system specs. And uh, yeah, PS2 was a, uh, sluggish, very hit and miss. And then PS3, just because PS2 was a problem doesn't mean PS3 necessarily will be as well. It's really kind of a case-by-case a, a -case basis as far as the games, right? But some PS3 games will run okay, some not at all, some extremely sluggish. So yeah, PS2, PS3 is a little bit pushing it. And then PSP, uh, playing games like Soul Calibur, I didn't have too much of an issue with at all, played excellently well. Uh, and then things like God of War, we're running a little slow, but if you go in, change some settings, maybe put on frame skip, lower the resolution, uh, you should be fine there. So there you go. A lot of, lot of stuff that, that's going to play decently well here, but you're not going to push it much further than GameCube, Wii, little bit of Wii U. 
PS2 maybe, PS3 maybe. You're not going to be doing no like 360 and and you know PS4 or stuff like that. It's really going to be pushing it with where we're at. GameCube, you should be fine with most of the library, I would imagine. But there you go, just quick video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Link down below. If you are interested in this mini PC, hey, it may serve a purpose to you. Reasonable price can do more than like a lot of system on a chip, like you know setups like Raspberry Pis and whatnot. If you just want an emulator device, hey, this might be for you. Thanks and bye.